What up everybody, welcome back to another episode of Comically Boston. Today is episode 141, back on another beautiful Monday here in Massachusetts. And we have an interesting week of news that just happened, so we're going to cover everything that dropped and everything that got announced and pictures that were teased. And the main topic of today is going to be talking about the casting for the new Game of Thrones show, the King, uh, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight. And we're also going to be talking about some more leaked daredevil born again photos and daredevil born born again has wrapped filming so stick around to the end of this video to see the talk about daredevil um we also had a busy week we talked about monkey man we watched a bunch of movies so stay tuned this week we're gonna have a bunch of movie reviews coming to the channel and uh stay tuned for all that and we'll catch up with x-men 97 episode 5 later this week as well so stay tuned for all that and hear what's going on this week with Big Cam. I'm your host, and uh, let's get right into it. Christian Bale is back in the makeup chair getting some prosthetics for a new movie called The Bride, which I thought, you know, it, instantly I heard that and I was like, what, The Bride of what? The Bride of Frankenstein? And then I saw the images and I was like, oh shit, Christian Bale is Frankenstein. And uh, he's got like actual slicked back hair, and he's but he's got like the staples through the forehead. I, I don't know what this movie's going to be about, but apparently it's him and Maggie Gyllenhaal. I don't know if she's starring in it, but I think she's producing or involved in the movie in some way. Uh, but Christian Bale is going to be Frankenstein, which I think is extra cool. Some great news over out of, uh, I believe, Universal Studios. Uh, they have now announced that Dune Messiah is officially in development, not just, you know, speculating anymore, which we knew it was going to get made. Dune Part 2 is one of the best films I've ever seen in my life, and uh, you, we just knew that Part 3 was coming, but whew. That was a crazy movie, and I can't wait to see what Doom Messiah has to offer and what Denis Delneau does with it. There was a poster dropped for the Joker Folia El Du, uh, and that is starring Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. That's coming out in October, October 4th of this year. And there's going to be a trailer for that dropping this week. Now, I've heard speculation about both sides of things. People being like, yeah, this looks good. I liked the first one. Uh, I don't really love Lady Gaga's acting, but I don't really love musicals either. So if they're going straight musical route, I don't know if that's what I'm into. But if they're, you know, doing it in a storytelling way where it's, these two characters are losing their mind and it's like the story set in their head and it kind of like what the first movie is. I don't know, I trust the director of that first movie and if, if it's half as good as the first one, it's going to be a banger of a movie. I mean, I'm pretty sure that first movie made a billion dollars for like a villain in Joaquin Phoenix. Like it was a creepy movie for it to make a billion dollars. Like people really like this character and want to see more of it, you know, so... I'm excited for that later in October of this year, getting some DC projects out. Uh, oh, how could I forget about this? Some huge casting for Marvel. Julia Gardner from Ozark. Play, she played Ruth in Ozark with, alongside Jason Bateman. And, uh, you know, people remember her for her lines in that show where she's like a crazy redneck. And she's like, if you're going to want to do this, you're going to have to kill me. Or there's like, you know, lines like my favorite lines from her. Like, you know, she's all sad and shit. She's like, I don't know shit about fuck. You know, <laughs> like, and, and, you know, when I initially heard this, I was like, really? That that southern accent is going to be the silver surfer but not the male version there's a female version from the comics and that's going to be her so maybe we see both versions in the marvel studios you know background or uh in the fantastic four movie but as far as we know for right now confirmed there's going to be the female silver surfer and that's going to be played by julia gardner and i am kind of hyped about that but i'm also you know speculative like all right what what is a uh, What's going to happen? You know, who, what, let's see it before we uh, judge it, in, in my mind. You know, I'm just, I'm just, yeah, in my mind, I'm like, I don't know if this Fantastic Four movie is going to be real. You know, I've heard it for years that it's in the makings, and it's just now coming to, like, about to be filming stages. And 
I'm still like a little uh, questionable. I'm like, I don't know if this is a real movie or not. But comment below, what do you think of that casting of the Silver Surfer? That's pretty huge news. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Other things I'm looking forward to this year to probably see in the theaters is Zendaya's new movie Challengers with the two boys. And she's like, you know, the prized meat in the middle. And phew, Zendaya looks hot as hell in that trailer for this movie. And poor t I, c I couldn't imagine Tom Holland watching this this trailer like... God damn it, you got two guys fighting over you and neither of them are me? I think that's why Tom went and did that gay scene in that other show. <laughs> to get back at her for doing a movie like this and doing, you know, Doom Part 2 with Chalamet and having kissing scenes and that. And he's like, listen, listen, we should just do another Spider-Man movie so we can kiss each other on scene and it not be weird. <laughs> other things I'm looking forward to that just got announced uh, recently, the actual date for the Mandalorian and Grogu movie will be... May 22nd, 2026, so just after May the 4th Be With You of 2026, we're going to be getting a Mandu Grogu movie. I'm so hyped for that, but later this year, and also later this week, I believe we're getting another story campaign trailer for Star Wars Outlaws. I originally talked about that show when the first trailer dropped in the first little gameplay bits. That, that game looks so goddamn good. And just to have a game set in the Star Wars universe again, I'm so excited for it. The last Star Wars game I played was Jedi Survivor, and that game was awesome. Uh, you know, it should have got recognized from some, some awards because that story was unbelievable. And Cameron Monaghan does a great job as Cal Kestis and... Sir Junda and everyone that was in, involved in that story was awesome. And I can't wait to see this one and what it has to offer. Also, last week, I didn't end up seeing the trailer, but I did see people talking about it. And we had the Tales of the Jedi show that came out last year or the year before that. But the Tales of the Jedi was interesting, telling stories about young um, Qui-Gon, young Dooku, you know, and, and showing, like, a little bit of things we haven't seen that have to do with characters that we like. You know, stories with, like, uh, um, Mace Windu, you know, stuff like that. And, uh... Yaddle, you know, like there's some cool stories in there. And now we're getting Tales of the Empire, right? So, Tales of the, we have Tales of the Jedi, so now we're getting the dark side of things. Tales of the Empire, May 4th, coming out this year for the May 4th, the 4th be with you. And I don't know what this is going to be, but from the trailer and the pictures here, it looks like Barris Offie's going to be in there. Elspeth, Morgan, oh, Morgan Elspeth. Uh, is the character on the left there, and she was like the big bad in, or one of the big bads alongside Thrawn in Ahsoka, and then we also see a little young Thrawn over there, there's a Darth Vader in the mix, the, you know, I'm I'm interested in this quite a bit, I loved the Tales of the Jedi, but now I love that they're spinning off and doing a Tales of the Empire in these little shorts, like, yeah, like the little Tales of the Empire, the Tales of the Jedi, uh, the Visions, like all those little short story Star Wars stuff, I ate up, especially the animation stuff, like, it just looked so good, and, you know, they're putting time and money into stuff that, like, you wouldn't expect them to be putting time and money into, but, yeah, it looks phenomenal, I love Star Wars right now, Star Wars is so good. Just finished over the last week, I just wrapped up two shows, the season finale for Invincible, oof, that was a bloody mess of a finale, and I can't wait another year or two until the next <laughs> season of that comes out also the season finale for tokyo vice was just recently i don't know if that's the season or series finale all i'm saying I, I would love to have a season two or season three of that show and see what happens with samantha and sato and jake and uh katagari and just see where everyone goes and what happens with the yakuza scene over there but the way it ended also could have been the end end which if it was you know i enjoyed that show immensely go check that out on max right now if you uh, are into yakuza and tokyo and japan stuff but also right now uh speaking of japanese and stuff like that shogun coming out every tuesday that show has been really good check that show out if you guys have any interest comment below we'll talk about it in one of the future episodes but Let's get into the casting, huh? We got casting news for the Game of Thrones spin-off show, much like House of the Dragon, but it's going to have its own show called A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, uh, colon, The Hedge Knight, right? So this story will follow Duncan the Tall and Egg, I believe is the two characters' names, but here's a synopsis for it. 
a century before the events of Game of Thrones, so a hundred years before Game of Thrones, where I believe we're at like a hundred and seventy years before, or like maybe even two hundred years before, is where House of the Dragons is, because that's a prequel as well. But this is going to be a prequel just a hundred years, I believe. I, I believe House of the Dragons more than a hundred years. So this would be after House of the Dragon, but before Game of Thrones is when this show is set. Um, a century before the events of Game of Thrones, two unlikely heroes wandering Westeros. A young, naive, but courageous knight, Sir Duncan the Tall, and his diminutive squire, I think I said that right, diminutive squire, Egg, set in the age when the Targaryen line still holds the Iron Throne and the memory of the last dragon has not yet passed from living memory. Great destinies, powerful foes, and dangerous exploits all await these improbable and incomparable friends. So, Sir Duncan the Tall and his squire Egg have been cast as Peter Claffey, which I believe is this tall gentleman here. He's going to be playing Duncan the Tall. And Dexter Soul Ansel, which is this young gentleman here, going to be playing his young squire. And Duncan the Tall, and just like the pictures that they have of like this this knight on horse and this just young boy walking around with him, and just picturing that in Westeros and Game of Thrones world, and just picturing this giant like almost like the Hound, you know what I mean? And then walking around with Anaria Stark, you know, having this big giant figure and then this like child, and the big giant figure protects the child, but it also seems like maybe Egg is like the smart one, almost like Lenny and George from uh, A Mice of Men. I think that's the name of the play. Uh, of A Mice of Men? Something like that. But either way, I won't attend the, the rabbits, George. If, I, <laughs> if you guys know, you know. <laughs> But, I don't know, I'm curious to see, some of the artwork and the imagery from this is just wild. Like, I'm curious to see Sir Duncan the Tall, what house he's been part of, and see him slay down some other knights, if that's the uh, time frame we're looking at here. But let's get into my final piece of news this week. Daredevil Born Again has officially wrapped, and it used, it was going to be an 18-episode season. Now, split into two seasons, nine episodes each, and they have finished the first nine episodes, and the second nine episodes will begin filming in the fall. This is a Instagram post from Philip Severa, uh, stunt coordinator for the show. Uh, and he said, that's a wrap. The first half of Daredevil Born Again has finished filming. Congrats to our entire stunt team, cast, and crew. I can't wait to see everyone's hard work. Interesting word choice there. That's a wrap. First half of Daredevil Born Again has finished filming. Very interesting stuff. Now, we had saw images of John Bernthal, and they were like, oh, maybe he's back. And we knew he was back, but we hadn't seen real pictures of him in his full suit like we had saw the Daredevil suit. So, spoilers if you guys don't want to see this stuff. But if you've made it this far in the video and you're already listening to me talk about it, it's not spoiling the show. It's just us getting to see John Bernthal back in the Punisher suit. So, here he is. Woo! The boy's all bloodied up. He's got his... Uh, Patenting skull mask on the chest on the, on his uh, bulletproof vest there, um, in this then here's a picture of him with these like policemen here. But if you look at what these guys are actually wearing here, like this group of guys here, they all have like big guns. They look like a SWAT team, and they all have patches on their arm. And if you zoom in on that patch, it says Anti Vigilante Task Force, New York City, Mayor Fisk. So not only from the end of Echo, are, is Fisk going to become mayor? He becomes mayor and then starts a vigilante task force, anti-vigilante, to hunt down people like probably Spider-Man, Echo, Iron Fist, Punisher, you know, all these guys, Daredevil. And uh, right after we had saw these pictures was when we got the confirmed rap. So I'm like, ooh, so the season finale of season one is going to somehow involve daredevil and punisher walking out together now i will say the daredevil suit looks so goddamn good i love that shade of red and um I, the only thing I'm, it, it's missing for me is the d big ass dd on the chest but punisher always looks good like he's just got his patented like 
look. Like, I just can't wait to hear John Bernthal's primal scream. Just, uh, you know, like, if you guys know, if you guys have seen the Punisher show or the t three seasons of the Netflix Daredevil show, John Bernthal's Punisher is by far my favorite Punisher there is. I have seen the Thomas Jane one. I never saw the Dolph Lundgren one. But he's just so good in the role and so believable as this psychopath that just cannot be stopped if he gets st going. He's almost like the juggernaut from The Last Stand. Like, just start speed and he's just going to be trucking through things. And he's just like, I'm the juggernaut, bitch. No, I'm the Punisher, bitch. <laughs> so... That's it for me. Comment below. What do you think of this news of Punisher back? What do you think of the casting of uh, the Silver Surfer? What do you think of the ending of Invincible? The casting for the Game of Thrones? A lot of things happen in the show. A lot of news. I would love to hear your thoughts on all of this stuff. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video. We're going to be talking about Dev Patel's new movie, Monkey Man, out in theaters right now. I had a really good time watching it, so stay tuned for that. And I will see you beautiful people in the next video. Peace.